Hi there, my name is Damien, and in today's demonstration, I'm going to show you how you can mention or tag a team or channel via Power Automate using the Graph API. So it's not as difficult as it may seem. I've got example JSON code on my blog that I'll link to in the description, and hopefully by the end of this, you'll be giving it a go and tagging your own teams and channels automatically. So without further ado, let's jump into my demonstration. So here I am in Power Automate, and uh, the first action that I've used here is to list the channels that are present on my DemoBird 365 group. So I have my DemoBird 365 group open already in Teams. I have several channels, the general and one that I've created exclusively for this demonstration called Tag Me In Here. And in order for us to be able to post to this channel, we need to obtain two unique values for this team and the channel. So the way that we can manually obtain them is to click on the ellipsis here and get the link to the channel. Now by pasting that link into my browser, but I won't actually navigate to it, it includes both the channel ID, which you can see here, and some of the values, 2B, 5B, and also the group ID, which we see here, 28D3. These we're actually going to obtain via some actions within our flow. But if you want to obtain them manually, this is how you would, you would retrieve them from your Teams instance. So now that we've listed the channel using our first action, I'm going to filter those channels or the channel list. And based on the channel name equal to tag me in here, I'm going to retrieve that single object. And of course, if you were doing the general channel, you would simply put in the word general. Now, I have two compose actions. We have the channel ID, which is going to obtain that first unique value that we saw on the Teams instance just a second ago. And the way that I'm obtaining that is from this filter array here, which will, in theory, only re return the one object. But we need to use this first expression which has brackets wrapped around the body of the filter array and then using the question mark and the square brackets we're simply returning the ID. So that will get us the unique channel ID for my tag me in here channel. Now in order for me to obtain the group team ID I'm actually using a, an expression that's new to me today uh, called actions and this particular expression will look at my list channels action and enable me to return the input parameters, which includes the group ID. So this unique group ID that uh, is relevant to the DemoBird 365 group will be returned as part of this expression. So what I'm going to do now, as you can see, I've got a terminate at the bottom. Before we proceed on to the graph element of the solution, I'm going to test this and just demonstrate the values that are returned to these actions. So we'll just go ahead, hit run flow, hit done. And uh, if I have a quick look at the list channels and we look at the raw input rather than the raw output, you can see that the GUID for the channel is actually returned here. So 28D3, if I have a quick look here, you can see the beginning of this GUID here is 28D3. So that's us returning that unique ID. Using the filter array, we're filtering all the channels to retrieve that single channel, which is tag me in here. And you can see that the ID for that first object is our unique channel ID. So if we have a quick look at the two compose actions, we now have our channel ID and our group team ID. So that's us, that's us set up now, ready to call our graph API. So back into the edit mode, I'll just minimize all these actions and I'll get rid of this terminate. We'll just delete that action there. I now have a couple of parallel um, actions. Both are the same type of action based on a preview send an HTTP request, which is an Office 365 action. And uh, they are going to call the same endpoint, which is one of the graph API endpoints. Um, you need to include, like I mentioned before, the group team ID and the channel ID, but both of those are constructed identically. It's the body that varies depending on whether you're posting to a team or posting to a channel. 
So you'll see some slight differences, nothing too major. And the main thing really being the conversation identity type here for the channel, it's a channel, and here for the team, it's funnily enough, team. Um, but the way it's constructed is we have an array here of all the mention objects, which are numbered from zero onwards. And in both of the examples here, we have just one mention, either the channel or the team. And then as part of the body, we have the content type, which in my case is HTML, and the content where you need to make sure that you reference the ID of your mention object. So you'll see there, I am mentioning object zero. Same for both of them, mentioning object zero. If you had several objects, one, two, three, four, etc., you could then use these at tags and the IDs for those numbers too. Now that allows us to mention both the channel and the team in separate posts. One will say this is a channel alert, the other will say hello team. But I also have another action at the bottom here just to demonstrate how you can reference two different mentions in the same post. So you'll see here we have the ID zero and we also have ID one. And then on our mentions array, we have in the ID zero, we have the team being mentioned. And in the ID one, we have the channel being mentioned. Now I'll go ahead and run this again. I have another terminate because I'd like to also show you how we can mention a whole list of users based on an, a, a security group in Azure AD. So we'll leave that for the next part of the demonstration. So I'll go ahead and hit test. Again, save and test. Now, of course, all this is on my blog post. So if you want to get any of the content for the bodies, that's on my blog post, which is in the description. And we'll just go ahead and run that. And even though they're parallel, they're taking different times, look. Ah. So the first two have posted fine, but the last one has failed for some reason. Mention ID one at ID equals one. Well, if we quickly jump into Microsoft Teams and have a look, we can see that first of all, I have my mention of the whole team. And as you'd normally expect, if you tag the whole team in Microsoft Teams, you'd see the number of members and the number of channels. So that's correctly tagged the team. And I've also tagged the channel. So just again, like you'd see if you were to manually tag a channel in your conversation, you would see exactly the same. Now, if we have a quick look at this particular action that's failed, it's mentioning a problem with the ID one, which I'm curious. So go back into edit and uh, I'll see if I can spot what's up. I can't, I cannot see what is wrong. Oh, I can see what's wrong. From an earlier demonstration, I was tagging my general channel, but now I'm actually tagging my tag me in here channel. So I failed to update both the mention text and the display name. And because they are not identical to the name in the at here, it failed. So I'll maybe just quickly jump in here. I'm not sure I can probably delete these because they are posted as me because the actions are running as me. I can go back into the flow, hit the test, hit save and test. And this time round, of course, it should post all three messages to the channel, to the team, and then to both the team and the channel. There we go, so it's run correctly this time. And we can see here we have the whole team, we have the channel, and we have the team and the channel mentioned in that one post. So the last part of my demonstration, if I go into edit, I'll just quickly shrink these ones down. I'm going to bring my terminate above here and also bring my scope for tagging the list of the security group members above. So all we'll do is run this single scope this time using the same actions above to get the channel ID and the group team ID. I'm using the list group members action. 
um, and you'll see the GUID here which is based on a security group on uh, Azure AD. I've just recently done a blog post about how to add users into a distribution list via this exact same action. So if that's something that interests you, make sure you take a look at my blog. And uh, the thing that we need to construct now is a, an array of all these at tags. So if you remember before, if we have a quick look at the example again, we have this at tag here that includes the channel name or team name in the description. We also have this incremental number that's based on the object number. So what I'm doing here is I'm using the select action which is based on the range of zero to the length of the list of the group members. And uh, we're then going to use that to dynamically call a number based on item. So for each of the items, zero to the length, we'll output that into our at tag here. And then we have another expression here, which is going to get the uh, display name based on the object integer value. So because the range again is from zero to length, we'll be able to retrieve zero, one, two, three, all the different objects which include that display name. So I'll uh, quickly just copy that and maybe just paste that into Notepad so that you can see that expression because it's quite an important one there. So it's based on the outputs of the body value now normally you would insert, for instance, zero, or you'd use the expression first, but because we have a range, I'm using the value item to retrieve that number as part of that select call, and we retrieve that display name. Then we need to get a list of all those ats. So at the moment, that's an array of the at tags. If I use the join expression, and that's based on the body of our uh, select action here, and we're joining it with a comma and a space. And then finally, we need to get all our mentions in that array uh, format that we saw before, which is based on the ID. And again, I'm using the same range as before from zero to the length of that body. I'll just copy that out again just so you can see that particular expression because I don't think I covered that earlier so here it is here it's a, it's range which will run from zero to the length of the body or value sorry of the list group members so if we know that we've got seven members the length will be returned as seven and uh, again that allows us to call that number as part of the ID here using the expression item um, we're going to use the same expression to get that mention text. So the mention text is based on the display name, which is that same expression that I'm using here in the at. Uh, again, I output that display name in this expression. And then finally, I'm outputting the ID of that. Let me think. This is the ID of the individual member. Um, and we'll just go ahead and copy that into Notepad because I think that'll be useful just to make some sense of it all. Um, if we just paste in here. So it's the outputs of the group members. We're looking at the values, which is an array. And as before, we would be looking at maybe the first object or the second object using that integer value, but we're going to use the expression item and because we're using a range that will return 0, 1, 2, 3, etc based on the length of that array and that will create us an a mentions array and then all we need to do at the very end is simply populate that list of ats into our content key or value and then the array of mentions into the mentions tag here and that's all based on the expression uh, outputs and mentions, question mark, square brackets, body. So a lot to take in there. Hopefully, uh, if I just bring up those expressions there, you can see them on screen. So if you want to be able to uh, screenshot them or copy them, they are here for you to have a quick look at. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit test into save and test. 
and my security group on Azure AD I think has maybe got six or seven different users on it. The flow is obviously going to query that. It's going to construct our array of at tags, flatten them uh, to create a list of at tags so that it can be accepted in the HTML. And then finally, we're going to create a, an array of the mentions. So if we quickly look at that scope, you can see we're listing the group members, of which there's a fair few of them, using that uh, range from zero to the length. We're then getting the names of those users and constructing that HTML. We're then creating a string by joining those individual objects. And you can see here now we've got that string of um, the different app mentions in HTML. Then we have to construct our mentions array, which again is based on that range, which is the length. And you can see the familiar, if I just expand the output there, the familiar ID, which is incrementing, we've got zero, we've got one, two, etc. The name of that individual and their unique ID that's been retrieved from Azure AD. And then those values, like I mentioned, are passed into our HTTP request. And that enables us to then hopefully tag all these individual users. You can see there's Henrietta, there's Asaya, um, there's Joni. So as you'd expect, if you normally tagged people in Teams, they're nicely tagged. And we have our automated post to Microsoft Teams. So a um, slight problem that I had halfway through the demonstration there where I had obviously got the mention text different from the channel name. That's something maybe to bear in mind if you're building this out yourself. Um, but hopefully a few different uh, options for you to take home there. Try tagging your channel or your team or potentially if you want to tag a list of users, you have that final method. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, I do have some of these details for this on my blog, uh, including the JSON uh, payload that you can go and copy and hopefully give a go yourself. Anyway, if you're still watching, please make sure you've uh, liked and subscribed, and I hope to see you again sometime soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.